Uh, I mean, you've had a mix of cars here at Le Mans, whether it's R10 and the Ultra. Now, this year with Quattro, it might be rain. How much of a benefit will Quattro be over what you drove last year? It's very difficult to say at this early stage, but certainly from the, the test, it does appear that the, the Quattro is, is more of a benefit in the drive than, for example, Toyota's hybrid system that works mainly on the rear-wheel drive. But like I say, we won't really know till it is you know, until race condition, but I think having that front wheel drive, you know, in the wet is going to be a huge, huge benefit, or we expect it to be. Do you, uh, have you had much testing in the car so far with it, with it wet? Not with it wet, no. We've been quite fortunate so far in testing, and the, the majority has been dry. The pre-test here was wet, and that was probably the first proper running I've done in the dry, in the wet with the car. But I have to say, we seem to have a very good balance, and that's the important thing in the wet. Because if you've got quite a neutral car or even a little bit of understeer, give the driver the confidence to push. The last thing you want is a, a car with a lot of oversteer. Because then you really have to come back off the limit, you know, just to make sure you don't make mistakes. Um, so I think the limit is what, 120 kilometers, which is about 75 miles per hour. Um, it, 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 I'd imagine that even still at that speed, with the paces you're running out there, that's so much considerable difference, or hopefully so. Yeah, like you say, we're, we're limited because we run the, the high hybrid on the front, the power comes through the front. We're not allowed to activate the hybrid until 120 kilometers an hour. That's different for Toyota, where they run the, the hybrid on the rear. They, they can activate it as early in the corner as they like. So in dry conditions, I'd say, you know, it's a disadvantage for us, because we have to wait longer to, to activate this boost of power. But in the wet, you know, because we get the power, the extra boost through the front is more of a benefit. But, you know, from our personal opinion, we'd, much, we'd like to get that boost as early as possible. Is there much of a learning curve going from the Ultra last year to, to and switching over to the e-tron? Um, of course, it's slightly different to drive. But the, the fundamentals of the car and the balance are still very similar. So, you know, after a couple of runs, you get used to it and you feel very comfortable, but then it's it's down to learning the key secrets to, to how to maximize the performance out of a hybrid, whether it be you know trying to recoup, you know, recoup more energy by having lifting off slightly earlier, or whether it's because uh, we get the extra boost through the front wheel drive, whether to get on the power earlier gives you that four wheel drive and therefore you know, helps you on the exit of the corner. There are a few things you, you need to adapt to, but you know, they're little things you, you only learn by driving and, and also in race conditions. You start to rethink circuits and kind of in that vein of okay, where will I recuperate or where will I use the boost? Yeah, I mean, you have to, a lot of thought goes into it and a lot of time and planning, especially with the engineers. You know, they do a lot of simulation before arriving at tracks and because, you know, the recuperation phase, you don't want to recuperate if there's no need, if you're already full of energy or you can't use it. Therefore, you know, it's really a complex process to maximize performance. And how does your engineer this year, a pretty decent amount of experience, you think that gives you guys a, a, a boost in and of itself? Yeah, I mean, we've got H this year, and I had him last year as well, and the great thing with him is he's won it, he's done it all before. You know, he's very calm under pressure, and, you know, you need that. You need someone, you know, on the radio that's calm, knows exactly what they're doing. And as a driver, it's great to it gives you that confidence. And so far, we've all been working very well as a team, which is which is key to winning the all. I mean, these guys have been your your teammates before, but this is the first time you all are together in one car. Is that how's that going? Yeah, we we race together in Spa, but I mean, here in Le Mans, it would be Lucas' first time. Uh, it's Mark's. He's done it numerous times. He's won it all with Peugeot. So we. We've got a real mix of experience. Myself, it's my third time here. But as a team, we've, we've gelled really well. I think, you know, it's not a disadvantage that we're, we're less experienced than the rest. Um, you know, of course, Lucas has, has got to learn the track and he, you know, he's got to bring himself up to speed. But from what I saw in the, the pre-test, he, he did that already in five laps. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a great lineup. It's a real mix. And hopefully we can take the fight to not only Toyota, but our teammates as well. Well, speaking of Toyota, they, they applied for a balance of performance change and they got it. Do you think that give them much of an edge? It's really unclear at the moment. They, they gave three liters in fuel capacity. The big question mark is, does that three liters allow them to go an extra lap? We know they're already a, a lap. They can go a lap further than us because they have a much bigger fuel tank. The question is, does that three, three liters then allow them to do another lap on top of that? 
and yeah. we didn't see, they didn't show their hand in the test, so we, we're not sure going into the race. But if they can do two extra laps, that's a, a big performance advantage for them, because it means we then have to go, for every lap longer they can go on fuel, we have to drive 0.6 of a second quicker per lap. Really? Yep. Because it, throughout the race, they're going to save so much time because they're going to have to pitch so much less. So, you know, if it's one lap, we have to go drive every lap 0.6 seconds quicker. If it's two, we double that to 1.2. You know, that's a lot of time to be trying to make up each lap. I would imagine that's a bit of pressure too because if, if they do have a hand to show, I doubt they'll show it before the, the flag drops and the race is doing. Yeah, I mean, we go into the race with a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk in the paddock that yeah, they're only able to do one more lap. But, um, you know, I think they're playing their cards very close to their chest and that means we're going to have to approach the race with a you know, full attack mentality and, and go out there and just push you know, straight from the green line. It seems like a poker face is always kind of a, a key component of, of racing, especially here. Um, speed of rivals, I right? see the Porsche signage across from the Audi garage this year, and I noticed that they, they pushed their cars down while you guys were getting your interviews yesterday. It, it is, how do you see that rivalry forming for next year? I think it's fascinating already. I mean, you know, there's, of course, um, you know, Porsche is a sister brand of Audi, but there's so much competition within the group. That they're going to want to arrive, you know, and already in their first year be competitive. And I think it's going to be a great rivalry, both on and off track, you know, pushing the limits of the technology and, and the rules, but also on track close fight. So I can't wait till they come in next year. I think it's only good for sports car racing and also, you know, for Le Mans and, and Audi themselves. That yeah, should be fantastic for racing. But we're up in the press center just kind of bullshitting about it and trying to figure out where this fits. I mean, Peugeot was such a hard fought rivalry and we're still a little new with Toyota, but, but they always kind of say, you know, you compete or you fight with your siblings maybe even more than you might against your, your chief rivals. Yeah, I mean, it's very true. It's like an inter-team battle. You know, you always want to beat your teammates. That's the first people you want to beat. And I think with with sort of Audi and uh, Porsche, you're going to get that same feeling. You know, neither company and neither brand is going to want to be beaten by their sister brand. You know, so that's going to be, you know, that doesn't mean we can take our eye off the ball and, and not focus on Toyota as well. But it does add that extra element. And I think it's just going to make the racing so competitive and so interesting. Both of the spectator and the driver. Thanks very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for the patience. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.